you doing today? I'm your host, Rich. Here we have Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the CEO of Manifest 7 Holdings Corp, Sturgis Carbon. How are you doing today, Sturgis? Doing well. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. Excited to speak with you and learn more about your company. Why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about Manifest 7 Holdings Corp and what made you want to become the CEO? Yeah, so uh, Manifest 7 is currently focused on building the first true integrated B2B and B2C platform for legal cannabis in California. And we're sitting in the largest market in the world. So we do everything from long haul full service distribution to local last mile, down to owning and operating dispensaries, and then ultimately delivery to the front door of the end user. So all of that seamlessly integrated into a singular platform accessible through 1-800-CANNABIS, which everyone can remember. Um, I got into space a long time ago, actually, about seven years, which is like geological time in this industry. And it really goes back to where I started. I'm a 20-year recovering investment banker. Uh, I got my start in investment banking and technology at the literally the height of the internet bubble, just as it was beginning to crash. Wow. And so to a large extent, I, I think over the last 20 years, I've developed a skill set as a bear market banker, but when cannabis kind of came calling five, six years ago, seven years ago, if you looked at the market and you had been through kind of the late 90s, early 2000s, you had been to that movie before and you knew how it was going to end. And so sure enough, we saw kind of the same 1.0 ramp up, a correction, and now we're in the consolidation and moving into the sustainable hockey stick. So I saw the similarities between my first experience starting out you know, as a young banker to this context today, and the relationship was so one-to-one, -one, I just had to jump in. That's great. Well, yeah, the timing is great. And like you said, there's a lot of things coming along the pipeline here. What are the three main focuses or what are the main focuses for the first three quarters of 2021? So we're um, focused on a couple of different things. Number one, in the distribution side of our business, that's a very organically driven growth strategy. So we're investing in inventory and vehicles. We've already built the infrastructure. We have the clients, the full services suite. So the expansion of that business throughout California is really going to be very ground up. It's more mature. We've been in it longer. It's got a, a serious running start and it's really been constrained primarily by resource, which we now have. Um, on our retail business, uh, it's, it's a much more acquisitive, inorganic strategy. So, you know, we were looking at dispensaries and kind of key strategic markets around California, particularly to the extent they unlock the delivery service from a licensing perspective. And then delivery in California on the retail side is also very fragmented and is ripe for a roll up. So kind of, you know, initiative number two or priority number two is, is the M&A side on the retail end of our business and scaling that way. And then I guess number three is getting the message out on our stock. You know, we're a pretty differentiated company. Um, we've been around for a long time. We've got a great operating history. We're poised for some serious growth in the next 12 months. And it's really just a function of amplifying that message so the market is aware of it. Now the cannabis space is starting to pick up because of the Biden administration now in place and possible federal legalization. Huge catalyst coming specifically in America. Can you tell us what sets Manifest 7 Holdings Corp apart from the rest of the cannabis companies out there? Yeah, and this is actually kind of a key philosophical difference. Um, most of the premiums in the market for the last couple of years have been paid on companies that are multi-state, and the way that they became multi-state was they had to vertically integrate. So they literally do everything from growing the plant to extracting the oil to manufacturing a brand to putting those brands on the shelves of their own retail outlets. That's a, that's a lot to do, and it's not really sustainable. And to a large extent, it's supported by the artificial barriers that exist between the state today. You know, when you remove the interstate restriction, you don't have as much of a need for like a million square foot grow facility in Oklahoma. This is going to normalize into a global supply chain where there'll be some limited locations. Everyone knows what they are, where it's economic and ideal to grow the plant, and then the supply chain will build up around it. Right now, we're contorting ourselves into this vertically integrated model, and we're missing the specialization aspects of it. So what Manifest 7 has done is said, we're going to do distribution and retail in a very focused, disciplined, and integrative way, and to the exclusion of everything else upstream. 
And what that means for us long term is as we grow out of California and in other states, all of those businesses, all of those operations are complementary and synergistic with each other. They're not redundant. So when the state ban lifts, if I've spread my model across the country, it's connective tissue that ties it all together in a domestic business. It's basically the, the legal use of the federal highway system. A lot of the other operators, by the time that you get there, they're going to be facing a lot of legacy redundant infrastructure that they just don't need, and they're going to have to contend with that. Mm -hmm. So it's positioning now and skating to the puck of where this all goes, especially, given your point, the increasing inevitability of federal reform. Now, Manifest 7 Holdings Corp. recently announced that its direct-to-consumer division has commenced local on-demand delivery operations in Brisbane, California. Can mm -hmm. you give us an idea of what this means for the company and what type, what type of potential revenues could be generated? Our community loves to hear about revenues. What are we looking at? Well, I'm happy to talk about revenues. Really where we should be focused is on the bottom line because these are all accretive profitable businesses. And you know, from a revenue perspective, one market varies from another. Um, Brisbane is a, is a key strategic operation for us because of its location. So a couple of things. We've had a home delivery presence in Northern California out of Oakland for the last three years. We've right. migrated our distribution business from that facility in Oakland also to Brisbane, which is multi-use. So we now have a scale optimized facility in Brisbane for distribution. And that's taken our tax exposure down from 8% to 1%. So there's a lot of margin expansion for us that gets us to profitability much quicker. At the same time, we launched a delivery operation out of Brisbane too, whereas Oakland is now dedicated as a delivery service on the greater Oakland market. Brisbane gives us an almost monopolistic coverage of the, the region from San Francisco into San Jose, which at the moment has not been licensed for any retail at all. So that entire kind of territory is totally virgin. And we have the ability not just to put a store there, but actually bring the product directly to those end users. So for us, delivery you know, out of Brisbane is just a replicable model. It's picking the major markets to put that service there to, you know, to, to cover that population. And if you take a step back and think about it in a state this big, every one of those operations is key in providing overall coverage. So I look at our delivery centers a lot like cell phone towers in the late 90s. You need to have enough of them spaced around the state with a tight enough kind of radius for service coverage to be responsive to the customer, retain the customer, and ultimately own the customer over the long term. So it's a proliferating strategy market by market across California. I think that's a great strategy. And like you said, it's an enormous market. You know, being in Canada, California is like the size of Canada. Yeah. <laughs> so you got all of Canada in one state. And it's, it's, it's enormous, it's huge potential, and you're in the right place when it comes to cannabis, in my opinion. Can you tell us about Manifest 7 Holdings Corp team and what each member brings to the table? Yeah, so we have a little bit of a unique team. Um, we, uh, you know, like I said, I come out of the capital markets and, and corporate finance. I was principally a transactional guy, which actually is, I think, you know, pretty appropriate for a space that's consolidating this quickly at the moment. Um, but we've tried to infill, you know, across the C-suite and the level below it, a healthy mix of folks that are coming from, you know, either an emerging market, a capital market, or corporate finance background. So we have fiscal discipline, the right kind of governance, risk management, a more sophisticated, professionalized approach to managing the enterprise. And interspersed with uh, that, that team are folks that we've pulled, you know, either directly from the cannabis industry for the product expertise or across distribution and retail in other spaces to make sure that we have the right channel expertise, augmenting the broader visionary strategy at the C-suite level. So if you take a sampling across you know, my management team, you know, we have uh, executives here with backgrounds that are as diverse as Warner Brothers and Disney, to Paul Hastings and the law firm, um, to some major corporations, you know, multinational corporations across a variety of spaces. So it is a professionalized seasoned team that has been through the emerging market process, both from a, you know, a capital markets perspective as well as an operational one. 
So we'd like to hear now here at Rich TV Live, we have a community that spans the globe. Over a hundred countries are watching Rich TV Live every month. So we're gonna give you an opportunity to be in front of all of those investors. Our community loves tightly held stocks, companies that really appreciate their share structure and treat their shareholders as if they respect them and they wanna build shareholder equity and create shareholder value. That's extremely important to us. Can you explain your share structure and how much is held by insiders? Um, yes, so we have roughly about 215 million shares fully diluted outstanding, about 100 million of them issued uh, and outstanding. Uh, you know, there's pretty tight controls from an escrow and a lockup perspective across the entire capital structure. So we have a pretty well managed float. I don't have the exact number off the top of my head as I sit here today. Uh, but what I can tell you, too, is unlike a lot of companies in this space, we've been very disciplined about the amount of capital we've raised. So where you look at competitors of ours that are in the nine figure range, you know, we've built all of this on less than $40 million over the last 40 years to get it where it is. We've done a lot of stuff off balance sheet to stretch, you know, investor dollars. As an example, very early on, uh, we established with a family office partner, a sidecar real estate fund to buy strategic properties and lease them back at the front end of it, not when we're distressed and need the cash. Why did we do that? We did that ultimately to accrete shareholder value. My job is to invest in the operations and get to profitability, not to go on real estate adventures that are illiquid, right? So every step of the way, it is about shareholder value, how we can you know, professionalize the enterprise to deliver a true institutional grade company for the benefit of those shareholders as well. If there was one thing you would want the shareholders or potential new investors that are watching this interview to know about your company, Manifest 7 Holdings Corp., what would it be? We're going to surprise everybody. You know, we, we have been very quiet intentionally. We listed last year for specific strategic reasons, one of which was, I think we called the trajectory federal reform is on, and we wanted to be public when that happened. We also had some financing events lined up that were tied to the listing that we're now availing ourselves to. But ultimately, we've been very quiet. If you look at our stock, it is, I think, you know, a bit of an iceberg there in terms of everything that's happening under the surface. There's a lot of growth coming this year and a lot of profitability. That's primarily where we're really focused. So I would say just, just continue to follow us because over the next couple of months, we'll be making some announcements that I think will be <laughs> the market will find very interesting, uh, particularly given kind of, you know, the nascent couple of months in the early days of our trading. There's going to be investors that are going to see this interview, see this video, and be interested in contacting you, potential joint venture partners, other cannabis companies as well that we've talked to that are going to see this video that might be interested in doing business with you. What's the best way for them to reach you? Um, so you can go to our website, uh, manifest7.com. That's manifest, the, the numeral 7.com. Uh, and we also have a IR page uh, as well uh, that you can access right, right there. And that'll come directly to uh, our head of IR or me directly. Uh, and I'll be right in touch. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Sturgis Carbon, the CEO of Manifest 7 Holdings Corp. Put it on your watch list, put it on your radar. Remember, Rich TV Live is strictly for education and entertainment purposes. Always do your due diligence. Always do your research before you invest in anything that we discuss here on our show. My opinion right now is this is a company that we're speaking about for the first time. Typically, when we do that, we're finding companies first that are undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. So hopefully more people will get a chance to learn about this company. If you guys like this video, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere, and subscribe. If you're not winning, you're not watching. Like we said, we bring in the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you, Sturgis, for joining us and have yourself a great day. Thanks for having me. You too. Keep up the great work. And for those of you guys that are watching, have yourselves a great day.